Welcome to the CSS channel. Our topic for today is the eight differences between vitamin D2 and D3. My name is Abu Zahar Habibiniya. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSS channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport nutrition. Okay, as we had promised before, today we're going to discuss the differences between vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Let's see what those differences are. As you can see on the board, I have listed eight differences between them. You know that vitamin D3 is famous as cholecalciferol and vitamin D2 is famous as ergocalciferol. Their first difference is in their uh, precursors. A precursor is an original substance from which another substance is formed. The precursor of vitamin D3 is 7-D-hydrocholesterol. So I'm going to put in here for you 7-D-hydrocholesterol. But the precursor of vitamin D2 is ergosterol. Ergosterol. Number two, food sources. Vitamin D3 comes from animal sources. Animal sources such as cod liver oil, fish, egg yolk. Sometimes you can find vitamin D3 in fortified foods such as milk and margarines. But vitamin D2 comes from plant sources. Plant sources such as mushrooms and yeast. Number three. To be able to be made in the skin, you know the vitamin D you make in the skin in the sun is vitamin D3, not D2. So vitamin D3 can be made in the skin, yes, but vitamin D2 cannot be made in the skin. Number four, affinity to DBP. DBP stands for vitamin D binding protein. This is a kind of protein that usually is produced by the liver and will bind vitamin D and its metabolites and carry them in the body, you know, from the skin to the liver, from the liver to the kidneys and from the kidneys to other organs. The affinity of vitamin D3 to this protein is higher. But the affinity of vitamin D2 to this protein is lower. That means vitamin D and its metabolites will bind to DBP much better than vitamin D2 and its metabolites. Number five, half-life. Vitamin D3 has a longer half-life, which is about 19 days. But vitamin D2 has a short half-life, which is about 13 days. Number six, potency. Potency means ability to maintain the blood levels of vitamin D higher for a longer period. According to medical textbooks, the potency of vitamin D3 is 10 times greater than that of vitamin D2. So if this is going to be uh, one plus, vitamin D3 is gonna be definitely 10 plus. Number seven, toxicity. We know that the safety margin for vitamin D is large. That's why toxicity is not that common. The risk of toxicity with vitamin D3 is rare. And the risk of toxicity with vitamin D2 is even much lower than D3. It's going to be very rare. And number eight, degradation by anticonvulsants. Anticonvulsants are a group of medications and medicine that are prescribed for epilepsy and any kind of seizures. Uh, these medications will induce an enzyme complex in the liver, which is famous as cytochrome P450. This enzyme complex is responsible for metabolizing and breaking down most of the medications and vitamin you take. So, anticonvulsants will increase the metabolism and breakdown of both vitamin D2 and D3. However, this effect of anticonvulsants on vitamin D2 
is going to be higher than that on y domain d3. So if this is going to be 1 plus y domain d2, it's going to be definitely uh, 2 plus. That means if you are taking any anticonvulsant uh, for your medical conditions and your vitamin D level is low and you want to give a boost to your vitamin D level, you want to optimize your vitamin D level, it's better you take vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. This was the differences between vitamin D2 and D3. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next video, you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.